Hey there, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel as all the uh, actual YouTubers say. I thought I would sit down and just chat with you and get ready. I have some shit I have to do today and I was like, <laughs> I've always wanted to do like a get ready with me video and just chat with, you know, myself <laughs> while recording it. So let's just do it. Let's just do some makeup, talk some keto stuff, talk some life stuff. My mirror is like kind of down here and I've never done one of these videos before so this could be a train wreck just warning you also make sure that all of your makeup tools are extremely disgusting you don't clean them ever um, like disgusting brushes make sure all of it's gross that's key <laughs> I always start with my mascara. For years, I have always started with mascara because I like to do one initial coat, like when I first start doing my makeup, and then I like to go in at the end and do another coat when it's good and dry, like after I do the rest of my makeup, because it really builds and gives you nice volume and all of that. And this is one of my favorite mascaras. I get it off Amazon, but you can get them at like CVS, Target, I think. It's the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. It is $4.99 on Amazon, so go crazy. Get to live your life. I have a doctor's appointment here in a little bit, so I have to get ready. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone's pet peeve is um, people's hair being in their face while they're doing their makeup, so sorry. So I'm gonna go in with <laughs> Listen to me, I'm gonna go in, watch out Jaclyn Hill. And this is my favorite drugstore foundation ever. Um, I think it's probably been like three years now that I've been buying it. It's the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. So my big thing for a foundation is it needs to be long wearing because I have long days. <laughs> Especially when, um, back when I worked in an office all day long like I needed it to last you know and I would also take walks and stuff during the day I don't wet this either I just go in dry look how beautiful just look, just look how beautiful oh if you care I am shade I am shade I don't fucking know because I don't see a shade on this bottle I don't know I'm one, oh nope nope there it is 405 porcelain that is my shade if you were curious oh I also love that it's a pump so I touched on this a little bit in my stories on Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram um, I'm keto half asser on Instagram but I get asked all the time like what I wish I knew back when I was starting keto like what were some of the things that like you wish you knew then that you know now after doing it four and a half years? You're totally new to me somehow and you stumbled across this video as your first one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but I used to weigh about 350 pounds. I'm five foot two. I started a ketogenic way of eating in 2018 and I've since then lost and I have maintained about 175 pound now weight loss. So you might say I have some experience in, you know, the realm of weight loss and the realm of low carb, ketogenic, all that. Because the way I do keto and have always done keto is making it sustainable for my life, making it, you know, a more like relaxed, comfortable way of eating. Something that I can stick to because I was like 200 pounds overweight. So I was well aware that being that much overweight was going to require commitment, time, and a, a literal lifestyle change. Like I was, I was fully on board with that and knew that. And it did. Like that is absolutely what was required. Even if you go the route of weight loss surgery, which... By the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with weight loss surgery if that's the tool you, cho you choose to use, but you still have to change your lifestyle if you're gonna go that route also. Anyways, my point is, is that you have to pick a lane 
that you're going to stay between the lines of. And for me, that thankfully was keto. So I eat things like keto bread every once in a while, like products, like I love keto snacks and I eat in restaurants all the time. Like we actually, most of my weight loss was lost by eating out and eating fast food and eating at restaurants and things because I don't like to cook. Both um, Mike and I work a lot and so we just, we just don't like to cook, like we just don't. So I did, don't. I mean, I don't like to, so I don't. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go in with concealer. This is one of the only high-end makeup products I still buy. I've pretty much transitioned mostly to drugstore after spending probably a good ass 10, 15 years buying nothing but Sephora high-end shit. I was like, girl, what, what's wrong with you? Um, so, but Tarte concealer definitely worth the splurge, 100% in my opinion. So it's definitely one of the only things I still buy. That's pricey. So we just put this under here and I love this concealer because it doesn't crease under my, um, it doesn't crease under my eye and it's also light enough to where it brightens my face because sometimes because I'm pretty pale, I have problems with concealers not being light enough because I really like that brightness. It's very youthful. It's one of my only tricks <laughs> that I have in my arsenal of makeup application. I already know this video is going to take me a fortnight and a half to edit. Love that for me. I am so bad at editing for YouTube. I don't know how people do it efficiently. I just suck. I just suck at it. I don't know. Like I just, I'm not good. I'm not good, but it's fine. Now, very important, I go in. <laughs> you're not gonna wanna do this unless you're pale like me, but I go in with this powder, which is called Super White Professional Powder from Ben Nye. I literally buy it on eBay, I think. I buy it like once every few years because it's so big, it'll last you forever. Um, <laughs> And I, this is what I set my under eye with. And it is white, obviously, but it's translucent. It's not opaque. So it's not going to be like white. But I am pale, so I do want something light under my eyes for that brightening effect. So I am actually super gross and cringe. And I dump some in my old MAC moisturizer thing. And this is how I apply it. So like whenever I run out, I just like dump some more in. <laughs> you could also use the lid, but you know, just call me Martha Stewart. Like what can I say? Follow me on Pinterest. <laughs> I just lightly circle around <laughs> with the grossest, dirtiest eye blending brush get it, get some all up in there and then, you know, just kind of blend it in. And you see how it's just like, it's so pretty. It's not white, but it definitely adds a brightening effect. Now I will set the rest of my face. Usually I'll use the Maybelline Fit Me powder because it's cheap and I like the color of it, but Right now I'm just using some random translucent powder that I have that I'm trying to use up before I buy another product. So this is just, it's just some colorless powder. And I just set the rest of my face with that. Basically going back to what I wish I knew four and a half years ago when I started keto that I know now after doing keto is simplicity is so key. And I think when we first start this journey, I think we tend to get really, really caught up in data points, especially when we're first starting because we see other people that are like measuring glucose or they have a CGM or they're measuring their ketones and like they're buying all the products and all the stuff and they're, you know, whatever. We get caught up in that. It's, it's a whole thing. And then we start to feel like, 
well, maybe I didn't lose five pounds this week because I don't have this expensive thing that like this other person has or whatever. When really you don't need any of it. Like you don't need any of the stuff. You don't need any of the extra data. For me, once I kind of figured out that a 20 net carb daily baseline was going to lead me to where I needed to be, it was kind of game over. Like I kind of stopped obsessing because there was a time where I would obsess with like a ketone number or like I would compare my weight loss with other people's weight loss because at the end of the day, what is going to lead you to your goal and to success? It's going to be sustainability and sticking to this lifestyle or any, any lifestyle you choose. And what is going to cause us to derail? It's going to be added stress. It's going to be comparison. It's going to be self-sabotage. So really my point is that unless you are like diabetic or there are actual health reasons why you need to be monitoring your blood sugar, I wouldn't just start gathering that data if you're on this keto journey for strictly for weight loss. It's just going to stress you out. Also, what affects someone else's blood sugar might not affect you the same way. Blood sugar is a very individual thing. And the only reason I'm talking about this is because right now it's extremely trendy for influencers to be um, like sh making these reels and videos or whatever about like continuous glucose monitors and how different like keto products or whatever kind of food like affects those readings. Also, some backstory. I... I like keto bread, right? But keto bread is full of wheat. So wheat is inflammatory. I know this, like common sense would tell you, right? That wheat is going to cause a spike in blood sugar because wheat is inflammatory. But just because something has wheat in it doesn't necessarily mean it can't be low carb or keto friendly, especially when you're doing keto the way I do, which is 20 net carbs a day. Obviously, if you're doing keto to like reduce inflammation or like if you have a gluten sensitivity or whatever the case may be, like keto bread might not be the product for you. But for me, it's been fine. Like I'll have it maybe once or twice a week. I get my blood work done regularly. It's wonderful. I still lose or maintain my weight by implementing it. So for me, it's fine. I had someone on Instagram who is a carnivore, send me really, really nasty messages when I was sharing the keto bread that I like. And it was v like, maybe I'll put screenshots in. If I'm feeling like extra petty during this editing of this video, I'll put in the screenshots of his actual messages. They were really gross. Like he's, he said that he was tired of me influencing idiots. I'm pretty sure that was the term he used. And so then he was sending me CGM reels from another influencer testing a keto bread. And of course his blood sugar went up from it. There's wheat in it. And so I, that's what my response was to him. I was like, yeah, there's wheat in it. This isn't some groundbreaking science here. There's literally like wheat in this bread. So of course it's gonna spike your blood sugar. Also, anytime you eat anything, your blood sugar is gonna change. And I honestly don't mind when anyone sends me reels or like stuff like that at all. Like if he had just sent me that reel without the commentary, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But he was so rude and nasty about it. And I honestly don't even know like what the point of his argument with me was because he was like trying to pick a fight with me. But he he's convinced that because he's carnivore, that's the only way to eat healthy. And I'm not saying that that's not a healthy way to eat, especially like if that works for you and you can sustain that. And for him, clearly it, it was working great, but I could not be a carnivore. So for me, that is unsustainable. And I would just probably give that up. Like if that was my only option, I could only be carnivore. I just, I don't think I could do it. But like he was thoroughly convinced that this reel showing a blood sugar spike from this keto bread is should be the end all be all like deciding factor. I'm not diabetic. I can have a blood sugar spike and be absolutely fine, especially because most of the time I'll eat one bigger meal a day. And if I am spiking my blood sugar once a day, 
it is not that big of a deal. It's really not. It's when you're spiking your blood sugar high all day long by eating frequently, eating high sugar, eating high carb, things like that. That's when you run into trouble and like insulin resistance and you know, metabolism issues. I used to do that when I was almost 350 pounds. Like that is how I used to eat. So I'm well aware. But for me now, if I'm going to eat a few keto sandwiches on some keto bread and spike my blood sugar one time, I'm cool with it. And obviously my blood work agrees. Well, too, there's a lot of people that probably couldn't sustain how I do keto and that's okay. You have to find what works for you and how you can modify something to fit into your schedule. Clearly, most people aren't going to eat out for most meals. I do because I don't like to cook and it works for my lifestyle. I'm busy, I work a lot, like I don't have a lot of free time. And when I do have free time, I don't like to spend it cooking and then cleaning up after myself. I would rather go out and have someone else do that for me. Did I tell you what kind of blush I use? This is some kind of Tarte blush. I also forgot to put on highlighter. I'm pretty sure this is soft and gentle and I just put that on the old cheekbones and then I put a little bit on the bridge of my nose and on the tip not like a ton I don't want to look like a freaking glow worm or whatever but I like a little bit a little bit now let's do eyebrows so when I'm like doing my makeup, I do my eyebrows like with a pencil, like I just fill them in. Nothing really special because I still have a lot of eyebrow hair. It's mostly just like shaping, filling in or whatever. I love this e.l.f. one. It's two bucks. It's the color taupe. Um, this is what it looks like. It is waxy. So it holds all of your eyebrow hairs in place. And the color on me is absolutely perfect. But since I'm just going to a doctor's office today, I don't like want to spend the time to do this. So my quicker brow thing is this elf. What is this? Brow Wow. It's like literally a brow mascara. So you just, it kind of does the same thing except faster and like it doesn't look as clean. You know what I mean? So if I want my eyebrows to look like clean, like snatched, I use the pencil, but today this will be good. So this is what it looks like. Oop, 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 oop. That's what it looks like. And it just has little fibers on it. This is, I think, also the color taupe. I just brush through my brows with it a few times till I get a good looking brow. Till I get a good looking brow. So I digress. Back to my original point. I cannot stress this enough. If you just make 20 net carbs a day, your goal don't be militant about it. Just, I used Carb Manager, which was an, a tracking app on my phone. And since I ate out a lot, a lot of my tracking was just estimations. And guess what? It still worked fine. It, it worked fine. So my goal was always about 20 net carbs a day. If I went to like 30, I didn't freak out. I just tried to do better the next day. Like 20 net carbs was just always my goal. And for my first year, of keto. I lost a hundred pounds. I only focused on net carbs. That's the only macro I cared about. I didn't care about protein, fat, calories, anything else. It was just net carbs. And after I lost about a hundred pounds, my weight loss definitely slowed down, which of course I lost a hundred pounds. I'm not going to be losing at the same rate that I was when I was almost 350 pounds. I'm now 250 pounds. So I had to adjust. So at that point is when I also started paying closer attention to calories. So I used carb manager and calories are different for every single person. So I'm not going to tell anyone how many calories like my goal was or what your goal should be, anything like that. Use a calculator and try to figure out based on your height, activity level, goal, all of that, how many calories you should be having. The way I look at calories is energy. It is the amount of energy I am putting into my body. Am I exerting energy? Am I walking? Am I active? Am I like doing something physical for my job? Am I, you know, running around with kids or whatever? Like, am I exerting energy? 
then if I am, I can probably take in more energy and my body won't store it as excess. But if I'm mostly sedentary that day, I don't get much movement in, I don't take walk or blah, 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 then it's definitely a possibility that the energy I'm putting in will get stored as excess because I'm not burning a lot of it off. So I just kind of look at things that way, not so much like a calorie is a calorie or whatever, because I do feel like not all calories are created equal. Obviously, I don't want to eat 1,700 calories of Skittles and call that healthy. I would much rather eat 1,700 calories of steak and broccoli. I feel like I have a bald spot. So I like this L'Oreal Infallible Eyeliner. That's a dark navy blue. It's not as harsh as black. I put it on the top waterline. And I put it on the bottom. I think we're done. Oh, I didn't do anything. I normally don't put anything on my lips except lip balm, but since we're doing a YouTube video, I'll do some lips today. Um, also, one very important step is I keep these pointy cotton swabs at my vanity and some makeup remover. <laughs> I dip it in the makeup remover and I clean up the mascara that I get off of my lid with the cotton swab. I almost never wear eyeshadow. I'm lazy, I don't think it looks good on me, and I know it's probably because I just am not good at putting it on or knowing what colors would look good on me, so I just don't even wear it. Because I get asked all the time, what eyeshadow are you wearing? I'm like, eyelid. <laughs> So then I'll take the other end and I get any makeup off of my lips. Okay. I love this lip liner, but since I hardly ever wear lips, I almost never wear it. So this is Whirl. Whirl is just a nice nude. I'll just go around the edges, obviously. I have like a very deep Cupid's bow in my lips so sometimes lip liner just looks harsh on me because of my humps i feel like when you have a nice round hump for a top lip like one solid hump or whatever <laughs> lip liner looks better uh for me it can be a little jarring sometimes so i kind of got to be careful with lip liner because it can look crazy on this bow <laughs> Our lips are good in line. Let's see what I have over here. My favorite lipstick is MAC Blankety, but it's on the other side of my house. <laughs> Let's do a gloss. This is a MAC Cream Sheen, and I'm laughing at myself because I'm like, I wear mostly drugstore makeup, and I'm pulling out all this MAC stuff. But I literally bought all this MAC stuff when it was 50% off or something. It was like during some crazy ass sale. This color is called Partial to Pink. I love MAC Cream Sheen glosses. If they're ever on sale, I definitely recommend picking up some Cream Sheens. They really are so nice. And I'm pretty sensitive. My lips, for some reason, are very sensitive to like chemical. Like they get irritated very easily. So I can't buy a lot of the cheapy kind of glosses that may be beautiful, but they just have some kind of like irritating ingredient. Uh, because it just irritates my lips too much. But the MAC Cream Sheens don't. They feel so nice. Like just pillowy, soft. Like I just love the way they feel on my lips. And there we go. That actually went way faster than I thought. I thought I was going to be able to talk way more keto stuff during my makeup routine. But apparently my makeup routine is way too basic. <laughs> Either that or I just take way too long to tell stories and to talk. So... I'll have to do more of these to get more out. But. And if you are looking to even just get started, I wrote a free keto guide. I have it linked in every description of every single YouTube video that I have. It's just a very basic list that I made because I kept getting asked repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly, what are your tips for starting? What are your tips for starting? So I just typed it all up into a guide. It shows a lot of my restaurant orders, a lot of stuff that I buy at the grocery store, links to some of my favorite keto snacks and keto products, um, the app that I use to track, 
all of that. So that could be a great getting started guide for you if you are just dabbling into the keto lifestyle or looking into low carb or whatever. If you liked this video and want more keto chats, if you have specific questions, please leave them in the comments. And I probably forgot to name a few of the makeup products that I use. So if you're curious about anything on my face, leave that in the comments too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.